Like this is before, this is like Shula years. This is before they had all this. That's why I said people, 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 people forget about the times. <laughs> the two, it's so crazy, man. I got a story to tell. When I first moved, when I first moved to um, Alabama from mm. Fort Wayne, Indiana, the guy my mom was talking to at the time. This, this, this is the reason why I fell in love with Alabama. He should, the first game I seen was the 1992 championship. Dip. That's when shit started to change, bro. <laughs> Devin Jackson joined by Leron McClain. We're here on the steps of the Walk of Champions. Leron, tell me what's going through your mind, man. You <laughs> you you see you you're just in awe. I, I can just can tell. It's crazy when, when I was just when I first stepped onto the Walk of Champions, man. Like, automatically, like it came back to like my first time walking on it. Uh, the spring, or what? What it was spring or what? 2005 when we walked on here when they were just building the stadium, man. And and really, this is my first time seeing all the you know what I'm saying the plaques and everything about the championship and. I'm just in awe, man. I'm just blessed to be part of this university, man. Man, tell tell me about just looking through these names and seeing history. You walk in on, you know, history is pretty much beneath your feet, man. Tell tell me about that. Just tell me about you know looking at all the the different coaches here on the side, the the names on you know on the national championships team, the coaches, all of it. Man, Gene Stallings, man, Paul Paul Bear Bryant, you know, then Nick Saban. You know, Ray Perkins, you know, and uh, it's crazy what I just said, man. When I first moved to Alabama, man, the first game I seen was the Alabama versus Miami game, you know, in 1992 uh, National Championship. And I felt like in the back of my head then, I knew what school I was going to <laughs> and everything, the university. I'm just I'm just blessed, man, just to be a part of it, man. Then I'm, I'm right down the street from this, you know what I'm saying? I'm right down the street from this, man. And this university, man, uh, then blessed me and my family so much, man. And, to help this city out so much, you know, man. It's just amazing, man, just to be a part of it. Yeah, talk about how you made history not only here, but, you know, in Texas Stadium. You you were one of the first teams to play here, and then you were one of the, you know, you had the longest run in Texas <laughs> Stadium history, 82 yards. Talk yeah. about being a part of history in two different stadiums. Man, that's, that's, you. I think you just brought that to my attention. That's crazy. I ain't even think about that, man. Just that feeling, man, of, it's so crazy, man. When I broke that run in that in that Cowboy State, I didn't even know that was gonna be the last run of that last run of that stadium, man. I scored the last touchdown, uh, and then just the the things of that of that run. If I could break down that run in like a 20 minute segment of everything that went on before I even got the ball, <laughs> then on how everything like that was my first like pretty much big run getting out into the open field, and how everything was just mute. I didn't hear anything until I crossed the goal line. I saw Dion. <laughs> I saw Dion and Marshall Falk, you know what I'm saying? So it was, that's 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 amazing, man. Then just, just being a part of the university, man. Guys, when I was in the NFL, they used to get tired of me when I come in there on Saturday. I, if, on Saturdays, when I come in for walkthrough, I'm Alabama head to toe. <laughs> Hat, socks, it didn't matter what it was. They used to get tired of me. But boy, if Alabama lose a game, the whole organization know my dick. <laughs> the whole organization know my dick talking about Bama this, Bama that. But they know how much I love my school, man. I got, it's, it's so crazy, my locker, I got my hat up in my locker, my helmet in the back of my locker, my 33 helmet with my jersey in the back of it, at road tie, you know what I'm saying? Like, people are like, what game are you watching the game? I say, if, if, if Alabama versus whoever. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't watching nothing else, man. So, it's just, it just, it just exciting, man, just a, a blessing just to be part of this, you know what I'm saying, university, man. I'm just blessed, man, that they gave me a scholarship to come, man, for real. And talk about how, you know, if you were able to play in, in this Nick Saban era, you know, talk about what are the things you would have done. I mean, you, you're a power back. You know, you've seen the power backs of Trent Richardson, Mark Ingram, you know, both Scarborough recently. So yeah. talk talk about the impact you would have made if you yeah. were playing on this Nick Saban it's so, team. It's so, it's so crazy that um, – it's so crazy that if I had Nick Saban and he and I see I see like he liked big backs. I think mm -hmm. I think they probably would have gave me a shot to run it. But it's so crazy when I was at the U university, man. With a, I, I never had a negative play, you know, running the ball. You know what I'm saying? I always fell forward, man. I always been a big back. Ain't no telling where where I would have went. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad that I'm glad it worked out the way it did because when I went into my um, NFL means at the you know what I'm saying being coach on the Shula. They thought I was a genius. Like, for real, bro. They thought I was a genius. Like, man, you know this already? I'm like, yeah, this is the offense that we ran in college. Like, Shula ran his offense 
understands now. The terminology is probably different, but I got it, boss. So, like, me coming into my rookie year, it really wasn't that hard for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the playbook that they had was the playbook that I ran in college. So, it was just like, man, like, you already know this stuff. And I started my first game in my rookie year. Get Cincinnati Bengals, Monday Night Football. History, you know what I'm saying? Speaks for itself, man. Did my thing. <laughs> man, hey, talk, talk about the, you know, the – just the atmosphere is you played in so many NFL stadiums yeah. and you played here. Talk about these fans versus the NFL fans, man. Is it <laughs> is it all the same to you or is it just, you know, man, it's, it's special? It's, you know, you know how it is in college, man. You know, it's, it's more it's more of a, of having, you know, more more kids in college and in and, and, and NFL you walk into a stadium, the same answers, you know, being from Baltimore. I'm walking into the Pittsburgh Stadium. They on your head. You know what I'm saying? You know, really, you ain't got too many fans, you know what I'm saying, in, in the opposing stadiums. You got your little section with your little purple. Mm. But, you know, pretty much it's all yellow and black. And they going to tell you exactly what you need to hear. They going to tell you you're sorry, you ain't this, you ain't that. Then it was so crazy. Speaking of the Dallas game, I was in tour with a guy in the stands the entire game. He was like, you ain't about to do nothing. And then I remember the one play I fumbled, but we got it back. And everything, it's so crazy. I scored that touchdown. I could not wait to get to that sideline. Not see him walking up the stairs, leaving the stadium right after. Man, it was the best feeling ever. It was the best. Seeing him leaving the stadium, he can even he can even face me man to man. He can't even talk to me the rest of the game. So, closing that stadium, I was probably one of the best thing. One of the highlights of my, I know the highlights of my career, man. And and I still had that picture, the blown up picture right now in my mom's house. Talk about this current Alabama team. They're coming in this season off a national championship victory. Um, they won 26 to 23 in overtime, or well, double overtime. It was a thrilling game. But talk about that quarterback situation. I think everybody wants to know. What is your personal opinion on Tua versus Jalen? Do you think they should both start, or do you think uh, one should start the entire season? Or you, what do you think they should do? Man, with that? It's, it's so it's so hard right now because I, I went I went off on. I, it's so crazy at halftime. Like I went crazy. I was like, man, I think I think we 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 panicking a little bit. But the way the offense was flowing, I feel like they was working on it all year. So I don't know what Save is gonna do. I just know it's a win-win situation. If we had two in there, we go win. I feel like if we had Jalen in there, we go win. You know, and I think I think the duel, I think we'd be more powerful with that dual threat anyway. Cause Jalen can Jalen is a baller, man. At the end of the day, he might not be as good as a passer's tool, but he's an athlete. The man was 25 and two before he, all the, all this was said and done, and the man did his thing, you know. So I think I think the main focus need to be, you know, just winning, just winning. We gonna take care of everything. I'm really I'm really I'm really excited about the defense. I'm really ready to see the defense. What saving if it had these DBs? We got a few little DBs coming in. Like we lost our whole secondary, so I want to see like what our secondary for to be talking about this year and everything. I know the backs gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? We gonna run the ball. That's what Alabama do. You know, and the O line gonna be ready. You know, I just feel I, it's so, I just so, so confident in like we find. We, I think we got a passer though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I understand. I understand. Man. You feel what I'm saying, boss? It's like it's like the first year Alabama has really had a true like pro style quarterback, a quarterback that can really like spin the ball and really be up there like with the upper echelons like the other quarterbacks. Like we ain't never had that. We ain't never had that at Alabama. Like when was the last time we had somebody talk about you know getting the Heisman? AJ McCarron. AJ McCarron. You know what I'm saying? You know, come on, man. Like, like nothing, nothing against AJ McCarron because he was a great quarterback for us. He won games and he knew how to win. As for how I seen two, uh, two or through that last pass on that touchdown, <laughs> man, that is that is uh, for for a freshman mm -hmm. and reading the defense like that. And he when he snapped the ball, he knew it was cover two. You know what I'm saying? Looking to safety off, he knew he go bite over. And he put the ball in the bucket, boss. Like. Like that's crazy, man. That's some stuff. That's some stuff. Like I feel like that stuff is like in a movie. Mm -hmm. Like you dream about, man. I ain't played the whole first half. I get in the second half, come back, then I score the game with a touchdown. Like that's that's unheard of, man. Like I I I, I still think I I think you still need to pinch yourself to see if he if he woke or not, man. Because I feel like it was like a dream or something. Because it was crazy, man. Like you don't play the whole you don't play the whole season, and you and they put you in at quarterback biggest game of the year in the second half and tell you at first they tell you, you go alternate mm -hmm. then you get in and go three and out <laughs> <laughs> then you come back in mm -hmm. and you do a little something then you then you throw a pick then I see you come over and tap Saban on the Saban on the shoulder I see when you, I, I can read his lip he said Saban I got this you get back in the game driving down the score on that third third down play like the dude showed me something I was like man like 
he been waiting for this moment his whole damn life, man. And he did it, and he, and he did it. I, I felt like, man, that's how people got to be, man. You got to have that tour mentality. You got to be ready. You got to be ready whenever your number is called, man. So that's why I salute him, because could, that could have went the other way, too. Darby, your tough up. That's what people need to understand. I understand, like, they had, you know, Glenn Coffee, you know, what it was, Glenn, then it was Mark Ingram, then it was Trent, mm -hmm. then it was Yeldon, then Lacey. Then, man, I'm talking about, we just stack them on, but K Kenneth Darby, one of the best running backs to come through this, this campus, man, to play. First man never tackled him. You know what I'm saying, man? It just, it's, it's crazy, man.